has everything. Bumping in, banging. <laughs> Big boys Big neighborhood. Boy. All righty. <laughs> Wow. Kevin Hart is hey. in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so and, and when you get your book promo, it doesn't come with this, oh, Kevin. That's true. I okay. purchased the book. And yeah, you know Kevin. why? Because your team didn't send us one. Well, first of all, you know wow. why? The book is for sale. You know why? <laughs> why? Why is that? Because I know you're a real friend. Oh, uh, yes. You know what? And they say if your friends don't, who will? That's exactly. it. But you know what? I guess so you got a, over a million people that's not your friends because <laughs> this book is selling like a mug. Yeah, you know? it's, it's, uh, it's killing right now. Man. Yeah, it people. is, man. What does that feel like? I care to have a successful book because you know I put my book out uh. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> real talk Kev Kev I didn't even do a, a, this is my receipt for your book right here Kev I actually purchased that yeah you know what I'm saying Thank but you, yeah man. my book there was like oh it was a couple mistakes in it you know print errors and it was yeah. like oh well we'll pick, pick it up in the reprint yeah. you know your, your second go round yeah. I never made it to that you didn't make it to the same yeah so really mine are collective items as well <laughs> yeah. collective they're items yeah they're vintage. they're vintage but yeah Kev man like your book like when I see you and Charlemagne and I see you guys like at your book signing and you yeah. guys are like panning the crowd it's like, yeah. so I'm like crazy what in the there. hell you've had on the real I've seen one where you had more people at one spot and this is not me playing and I thought this then I had on my whole book tour no no it's uh I can honestly say the reception has been amazing I why mean, are you look, talking like this what do you right, mean talking like this? you got like an author's voice now <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely this is my book he's oh, sophisticated all right yeah I'm, I'm in there's different there's different levels <laughs> right right there's right different levels to me you okay know, you okay have, I'm sorry I just wanted actor, to make sure you have <laughs> comedian you yes. know you have the businessman but right now you're speaking to an to an author to an author <laughs> so uh, and, and I would say a best-selling <laughs> yeah well, you know this is uh this on is way. a goal this yeah. is a goal and this is Something that was on my list of to-dos that right. can now Aww. be checked off. Hey, man, let me tell you. Go ahead, honey. Oh, I was just saying. I was checking, checking. it off for him. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't get in my way next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> She's still starstruck. I don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? But, but it's crazy, Kev, because at some point we thought we knew not all, but we knew a lot mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. In the years that I've known you, we shared so many stories, Kev. But reading the book... You, you know, and see. I'm going to tell you straight up, like, I had the book since yesterday, so I'm more than halfway through it, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm looking at what I see so far, and I'm like, man, there's a lot of layers, and, and when we think about Kevin Hart, we say, man, I, like, I always say, man, you're hustling, you're grinding, you're this, you're that, when I read the book, I see a lot of the purpose now, you know what I'm saying, and but when you could have turned around. Writing it. I mean, listen, the reason for writing the book, big, and this is just keeping it 100, is it's, I'm not selfish with information. Yeah, man. You understand what I'm saying? And I think that right now I'm at an amazing point in my life where uh, I have a platform. Mm -hmm. Okay? I have a great body of work. And people look at you and they say, oh, my God, Kevin's successful. Uh, how did he do it? That's the biggest question. How did you do it? How did you get there? And I just want people to understand that that road to get in here is not the easiest road. Man. Mm -hmm. And that, that amount of no's that you hear on that road, prepare you for the one yes that you will eventually How see. do you not wow. say F it? You know what I'm saying? And I mean, you got to read the book just with the story, bro. Just yeah. of, you know, tr doing your thing and, and feeling and thinking that it's popping in Philly. Then somebody telling you, Keith said, no, you got to go to, it was it Keith that told you, yeah, you got to go to New York. Keith Robin, you got to go to New York. And then actually chauffeuring somebody up to New York without even getting on stage. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and performing, having, for yes, oh. performing for food. Yes, performing for a burger and, and, yeah. and a Coke. Mm -hmm. wow. How do you take that and then going to someone else that was respected that you saw push careers through like Jerry Seinfeld and Eddie mm -hmm. Murphy and you know, is it Lucian? Yeah. Lucian that you go to and this is the guy that's going to make or break flat you. Out. What did he tell you after your comedy well, set? For your, for your listeners that, uh, that of course don't know who Lucian is yet because you may or may not have read the book yet, Lucian... Lucian Holes was was like <laughs> the Jedi. You know, mm -hmm. if this guy put his hand on you for comedy or said anything positive about you in stand up comedy, you were you were golden. Yeah. You know, he he had the Oprah effect when it came to comedy. Yes. You know, he discovered so many of the big uh the big names in comedy today. So I had an audition for Lucian where I had to perform at the comedy club. Lucian was gonna watch me and then I would get reviewed and be told if I would be able to come back and perform in a comedy club and be a regular. I perform. I thought what I did was a great set. Uh, he takes me to his office and he flat out tells me to my face, no smile, no nothing. He said, "This isn't for you." He said, yeah. "You need to, you need to find something else to do." Damn, this isn't it. 
And I'm I'm waiting for the joke. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, You're like, this guy I'm is hilarious. <laughs> I'm waiting for like the ha, I'm joking. Yeah. Man. Now get on out there nah, again. He was like, uh, so you know, you should really, really think about putting your time into something else, more constructive. How yeah. do you yeah. take that? Do are you motivated by now the F you? Are you motivated by is it collective things? Like what I what I had to understand was that you you're not in competition with with anybody but yourself. So those those grudges, you know, those those reasons that you may uh give yourself a motivation ultimately are are you know, they're, they're pointless. Right, going, okay, Yo, I got you, yeah. I'm mad at you. I'm going to prove you wrong. All right, well, when I prove you wrong, then what happens? Yeah. Right? Like, what, yeah. what happens now then? Now prove so, me right. Yeah, it's like I don't, there, there is no win in that. So I had to understand that if I'm going to stay true to what I feel that I can do, then I need to be the one to convince myself that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But a lot of people, Kev, don't have that bounce back. That's why mm-hmm. you don't have a lot of a lot of people that, you know, make it to a, a certain successful point. In life, because mm-hmm. a lot of people, um, a lot of people can give up. It's easy to give up. You know, Hell it's yeah. easy. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. I ain't, man, I'm, I'm done. I ain't going. Oh, yeah. I ain't mm-hmm. going to keep going. Yeah, the I don't bet, feel like the, going to work. The I'm one, done. Yeah, man. It's easy. It's very easy. But what's hard is going, yo, yesterday I got nothing from working as hard as I could. Nothing happened from that. I'm going to do the same thing again today, but I'm going to try to go harder. That's the hardest thing in the world mm-hmm. to get up every day. And give a hundred percent, and and be in the same position that you were each day, but mentally know that you're trying and trying and trying. Mm-hmm. That's that's a real that's a real grind. And you know what happens now, Kev man, is that people think anything that you have to do. There's no real outliers. There's no ten thousand hours anymore. People think that anything you do right now. I got to be compensated. Yeah. Like people want to jump in right now and they want to be Kevin Hart. Yeah. You know right what I'm saying? That. Without yeah. going through or knowing the story of how you got there. Now we, we can look at Kev now, Gucci sweater on, or if, if we see you on a plane I, or whatever, but you need to really but, point out. What but, I well, we got it on video as well. I know, but, we <laughs> right. but you know what? I always tell people like, like man, why should I be ashamed of my success? Mm-hmm. Like I work hard. Mm-hmm. I get up every day, no matter if I'm sick or not, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. I kiss my kids. I would love to just sit down and do nothing and and get it all. See, but once again, that's where you go into the the care of of somebody else's opinion. Mm-hmm. That's why I keep preaching like you you are your own competition. You there there is nobody that can judge your actions but you. If if I'm putting like you said, if I'm putting a hundred percent into my life. I'm going to put 100% into my play when it's time for me to play. Right, I'm I hear you, I hear you. I'm putting 110% into me and my family. I don't care what it is that we do. I'm going to give it 100% when it's time to, right. to enjoy ourselves on whatever level we want to do. That's that's my decisions. It's, it's, it's what I feel I deserve from what I've done. And I think what... What I love the most about the book and the story that the book is telling is basically making people understand that your life is a book. Your life is mm-hmm. a book. Your life got chapters. Each chapter in your life is 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 a punctuation, whether it's a positive or a negative. And before you move on to that next chapter, you got a decision to make if I'm going to correct what I did in the chapter before. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, when you get to the end of that book, it's written by you. So how it ends, you wrote it. Right. If that book ended bad, which is your life, you wrote that book. If you went to jail, got out, and then went back to jail right. again, that's you true. wrote that. That's that's your handwriting all over that. But if you went to jail, said I'm not going back, when it took three steps back to make five steps forward, Speak it. that book is going to end on a positive punctuation by the time you close it and it's the end. My thing is write your story, but write it correctly. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's full of imperfections. And that's mm-hmm. why I let it all out. That's why I got as honest as I got in my book. Hell of a book, bro. Yeah. Thank Hell you, sir. Book. And I'm talking this. about, man, this is like already, Kev, I got so many like highlights and scribbles. Notes. You know what I'm saying? Because it apply- it's not just your life mm-hmm. and your lessons. It applies to us also. Just when you're thinking like, damn. You could, everybody think, oh, I'm doing a lot. But then you think like, damn, no, I could be doing more. You could be doing more. Yeah, mm-hmm. you could be doing more, man. And you're, you're cut from a cloth, Kevin, that it would have been easy to kind of just check out or easy to just say, you know what, man, I got so many so-called things against me that 
you know, I can be the so-called statistic mm-hmm. and people can look at that and it's 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 not a problem because, you know, we, we come from certain beginnings, you know. Yeah, 100%. And, but it seemed like whatever the and the same with me, Kev, like we didn't grow up rich, but we were extremely rich in love. We were affluent with my mom and my brothers and everybody. Which and I can almost, see almost which is almost more valuable than money. You know? For sure. So much. More. It's almost more valuable than money. Yes, and sir. I say that because, you know, I didn't I didn't have it. Coming up, I mean, you know, we was we was in a a, a one a one room efficiency. I wouldn't even call it a, an wow. apartment. You know, it's my bedroom was in a hallway. My brother's bed was on top of mine. My mom had the one bedroom that was in the house, but the kitchen was right next to me and my brother's bed. So you went like you walk in. There's the kitchen. Then you got me and my brother bed. Then you got my mom, which was kind of a room, and then we had a little space where we put a couch. That was it. I mean, you're talking, mm. I don't know, 400, 500 mm, square feet. If that, huh? If that's that, tiny. right? But that's all we knew. Mm-hmm. That's home. I'm happy. Yeah, I, yeah I didn't, hell yeah. I didn't know backyards and grass existed until yeah. I went over one of my friend's houses <laughs> on a swim team. And I was like, what is this? Y'all, <laughs> uh, y'all like the, the, the drumming. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. Man, where, y'all where are really at? Where we at? <laughs> like, this, this is a different stroke for real. And you got a car? Right. Oh, right. Like it. We overcame. Nobody told me. <laughs> this is, that was a different, it was a different, uh, it was a different look. Mm. But, but the amount of attention uh, that my mother gave me, mm-hmm. whether it was strict uh, or not strict, it was I had a woman who was constantly in my face mm. that wouldn't allow me to do no wrong. I had a woman that constantly be in my head. You don't start stuff that you're not going to finish. You're going to be something. You're not going to be. It was constantly beating my head. As much as I didn't want to, it's in it's in me, whether I wanted to be there or not. It's right. When you drill something in someone, and yeah, it's on man. a verbal note on a day-to-day basis. You may think it has no effect on you. I didn't know that my mom had the effect on me that she had on me until I got to be about 23, 24. Yeah. And I started doing things. And I was like, yo, that's my mom. Yeah, <laughs> man. It's crazy. You learn it. When you start saying stuff like, no, 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 I started it. I'm going to finish it. I'm so, oh, what the? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yo, I know that I've been doing a lot, but I want to do more. That was my mom. My mom was going to school, going back to school. I got this degree. I want to get a master's degree. Wow. Why, mom? Why not? I'm just saying this. Why? You already finished school. You already graduated. You got a master's. Why are you going to get another one? Because I can. Mm. Why can't I be the best that I want to be? I'm doing it, Kevin, just to further my education for me. Things like that stuck with me. So now when you see me work so hard, my whole thing is why shouldn't I be? Mm-hmm. Why shouldn't I want it all? Why? Why, mm-hmm. why should I only want a little bit? I, I look at it as I can have it all. Why yeah. Why can't I have... Oprah got a network. I want a network. <laughs> right, 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 right. Tyler Perry went and got a studio. I want a studio. Yep. Hov, what you doing with Rock Nation? That's your whole thing? Man, I want to do that. Why not? Why not look at what people are doing as a blueprint and tell yourself, I aspire to do that and to have that. And when it's actually in arm's reach, which everything is in life. Right. If you really, really think about it, it is. Everything is in arm's reach. You just have to work to get there. There, there is no easy road to what you want. It's a long road. You got a lot of people that want to be a doctor. Some people don't want to go to school for eight years. Right. right. But the ones that go to school for eight years end up being some of the best doctors ever and live a doctor's lifestyle. Some people say a doctor's lifestyle sucks. Not the doctor that dreamed to be the doctor. Right. He loves right, it right. because that's what he wanted to do. Everybody want to be a lawyer. Some people don't want to go to school for that eight to ten years. Mm, that the ones good. that make it out. End up being some of the best lawyers in the world and are very happy with their practice and the people that need it on a day-to-day basis. But it took work to get there. Everybody that wants to do something doesn't understand the steps that you have to take to get there. And it's not just in entertainment. It's in all aspects of life, man. And that's what I learned at a young age. No matter what, you can't escape work. You can't. Mm. Only way to escape work is the easy route. Right, right. Not to work. Which is quick flipping money. You want to go... Quick flip some money. There's, there is a world for that. But that world nine times out of ten ends bad. Mm-hmm. You got a couple people that's going to get lucky and are smart enough to get out of it. Yeah. Other than that, you're not going to escape work. You're not. And that's what I've realized. So instead of trying to escape it, I address it from the standpoint of putting 110% into it. Mm. In any and everything I do. Anything. There is no half-ass in me. Man, there's so much, Kev, that I want to talk to you about as well, man. Like... It was at at one point in the book where you were saying, man, when you, when you worked at the shoe spot that mm-hmm. you worked at, 
then you wanted to be like, man, I'm going to be a Nike rep. City Sports Philadelphia. Yeah, and you, you, like, you wanted to be like, I know what I'm going to do. I had it. I had it I'm going to be a Nike rep. I know about all the shoes. I done learned the game, so on and so forth. And now, when you kind of uh, fast forward to where you sit in art scary. today, you signed are Nike. You're a Nike rep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Signed like, by Nike. It's the scariest. How crazy is that? It is the scariest thing in the world how life comes full circle. This guy used to come in. My mom basically said, look, you're not going to sit in here and not do nothing. Uh, this is after graduating. I went to community college. I was like, this ain't for me. I don't want to go to school, mom. She said, you're going to figure it out. You got a year to figure it out. And if you don't do it your way, you're going to do it my way. Mm -hmm. And that's an agreement that we made. And I was working at City Sports, and this guy used to come in. He worked for Nike, and he was in charge of product placement. And all he would do, no matter what we had in the store, he would change it. Our product isn't displayed right. These mm -hmm. Nike shirts should be here. The Nike sneakers should be here. These should be displayed here. This information should be here. I want people to understand what we are versus what other people are. And I used to be like, man, this guy's so cool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, man. He come in, he got his little Dope. backpack on and Nike stuff. He worked for corporate. And I used to talk to him all the time. How do I get to corporate? I used to ask the question because in my mind, that's what I wanted. Right. That's what I wanted to do. And comedy hit. And I never looked back at that world. Because <laughs> right, yeah. I was like, I was I was wrong. Right, right. That's but not what I wanted to do. In a sense, you were right. Yeah, yeah but like, it's like, scary how it comes full circle because years later, it comes up that, wow, Kevin is motivating and inspiring people to simply be better. Yeah. Kevin, it's a great partnership between you and I because of your lifestyle. We would love to engage with you more in a conversation. I said only if the conversation coincides with what it is that I really do. Everything I do is authentic. So if it's about me being healthy, then you have to do it the way that I do it. Mm -hmm. I run, but I love to run with people. So if I can motivate and get people to get up and get out and do what they don't normally do, this is perfect. If you guys can support that and put a movement behind me, hence move with heart, mm -hmm. hence hustle so heart, mm -hmm. hence with all the training, all of that stuff comes with that separation between athlete and regular individual can be closed because in our mind we should all be whatever we want to be. We all got a little athlete in us. I'm just giving you a push to realize it. Nike said, we love it. We love you. We're signing you. I just re just re-signed for two more years. Damn. Wow. And you have your own God. shoe and your own I have line. my own shoe online. It's 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 unheard of. Uh -huh. It's unheard of. But is there another and I and, and, and it's crazy just to say comedian now. Yeah. Uh Kevin, you just say Kevin Hart now. You know what right. I'm saying? That's yeah. so like true. if I were to introduce you, I wouldn't say comedian Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. But is it are you like the only cat that that came from that field comedy wise that I never had another entertainer period? Sign. Damn! Wow! Sign. I think I think uh, I think Michael B. Jordan now is coming on the team, which is good. Shout out to him! I think they can hide him under some of them Jordans that didn't yeah. say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like team, we, we got the he's Jordans. Team Nike. <laughs> Michael he's B. Team Jordan Nike now too. Kevin, I remember years ago before you wrote the book, you used to tell me stories about your pops. Mm -hmm. And one of the funniest <laughs> stories to me then was when Pops was wanted to teach y'all how to be men, oh, and wow. he had a situation that was going down. And this is not in the book though, uh, Kev. Uh. -uh. He had a situation that was going down, so he took Kevin, his brother, mm -hmm. outside, and he sat y'all on the porch yeah. because uh -oh. he was about to get physical with someone, and he wanted y'all to see <gasps> how got men— hands put on him. <laughs> really? Got hands really? put on him in front of the, me and no. my brother. The dude beat his dad no. up. Dude hit my dad. That's when I had the joke. If you guys remember the joke where I said my dad uh, thought he was getting jumped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought he was getting jumped. The guy, the guy connected so fast. First of all, first of all, it's scary. The guy was so good that me and my brother didn't even want to help. That's that's how good he was. Yeah, you know when you and your brother, when you looking in shock, at what's going on? Like, like we can't happened, do nothing about that. It happened so fast, and uh, the guy at the end of it, at the end of the fight, the guy, the guy goes, "All right, you good now?" And my, he says it to my dad. You know like, that's the ass whooping. Good. Like he, like he yeah. wanted, he wow. wanted to be done. And my dad was like, the question is, are you good? And I was like, <laughs> you lost that. I said, I think, I don't think dad know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think dad followed him the same. Yeah. The are same you good? Yeah. Hey, hey, Grabbed man, my, me and my son hand like he was, like he had victory. Hey, man, like, how do you turn that into laughter? Because there's so much with Pops where you were saying how your dad, can you tell the story? And this is in the book as well. I don't want to oh give too God. much away. But when your, when your brother beat your dad in basketball. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now my son, Jaden, you know my son, yeah, know he son. beat me in basketball. Mm -hmm. And I felt a certain way, but I was like, damn, Jaden's doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're proud of him. I left it right there. I was yeah. proud of him. That's not your, my dad. <laughs> your brother beat your dad in yeah. basketball. We, Explain. Uh, first, first of all, my, my dad played. He doesn't even play basketball. So I don't even know why he <laughs> wanted to. Like, like, listen, he's not like, 
My dad, like, you know when you see somebody shoot a basketball, you're like, oh, God. It's like, 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 it, like, it's nothing about that shot yeah. that looks like they ever shot right. the ball. Like, like, yeah. There was no form. Like, he literally just oh. chucked the ball. Oh, he just man. chucked it. My my dad was like, come on, I'll play you. And my brother's like, no, nah, Dad, you, you don't even play. He's like, come on, boy, i play you. And they played to, like, eight. It was like ten. <laughs> ten. Wow. Oh, and wow. my brother beat, he beat him, but it, was, it wasn't even, like, a hard game. And on game point, my dad was like, I'll be back. Is this a true story? <laughs> he likes to come it's back. a true story. Do y'all know this story? No. He okay. goes, I'll be back. And me and my brother just there. We're just shooting the ball. My dad comes back with a stray pit bull. Stop. And six this dog on my brother. No. Listen, listen to me. First of all, I don't know where my dad got the relationship <laughs> from with this dog. I don't know how this dog... Knew the commands that my dad, it must have came from like a side house that my dad oh, had that yeah, he was living yeah. in. He sick this dog on me and my brother. When I tell you, we were in like the schoolyard and we was like, Dad! Like, we was like, Yo! Yo! He's like, Get him, get him back! Man, this dog was not oh playing games. God. We jumped on the fence. We just oh, jumped man. on this fence. And he was like, Now say you beat me again to my brother. My brother was like, What? <laughs> Wow. Say you beat me again. He was like, what you talking about? The game, you kept talking all that trash. So Talk that trash now. <laughs> he was he angry. really went and got the dog for that purpose. Sick, tried to sick the dog on us, man. Oh True story. Hand on the Bible. Oh. Sick the dog on me and my brother. I can have you, listen, I can have you guys in awe about the things that my dad did. That's hilarious. My dad, my dad uh, we Please tell we the camp in, story, man. <laughs> 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 just just the way that things get flipped around like it's y'all fault. He was my dad was uh he was one of those parents that thought that giving a kid an amazing amount of responsibility when a kid obviously wasn't at an age to have any was the right <laughs> thing to do. Yeah, I'm like, teaching you know, how to be responsible, yeah. be a man. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna learn. Everything was Yeah, was you're dead, gonna learn it just, today. It, was, it just didn't make sense. When you think about it now, it didn't make sense. So my dad told my mom he wanted to drop me off at camp. My mom said, yeah, that's fine. My dad comes to pick me up. Because your mom's at work, right? My mom's at work. Okay. So he comes to pick me up. And he's like, hey, come on. You're going to roll with me. I'm going to take you to camp. And I get in his car. He's like, you know where your camp at? And I was like, yeah. You know, I'm eight, nine years mm-hmm. old. He's like, all right, take me. Show me how to get there. Right. I'm like, you know, my dad driving. I'm like. Uh, okay you know, like, <laughs> You're a kid He's like Alright where I go I said go straight <laughs> you know, It's a game yeah. It's a game to me now Go this way <laughs> Go that way <laughs> Go this way Go that way We pull up at this church And he like That's it And I'm like Yep yeah. <laughs> that's like, So do you see other people out that's why, like, that's why I said This was it uh, Cause I saw like Kids and stuff right? So I was like I was like That's it And he was like Alright I'll see you later <gasps> And I get out the car Close the door. And before I turn around, my dad was gone. Call oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> Mission Call accomplished. I'm in yeah. this camp for about two hours before they realize I didn't belong there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, who dropped you off? I'm like, my dad. They're like, what's his number? I was like, I don't know. I ain't know nothing about my dad, but I knew everything about my mom. So I called my mom. Uh-oh. That's the worst thing that you can do. Yeah, man. My mom said, what? He's what? Where, where's his dad? All hell broke loose because then, then she tracked my dad down. Uh-oh. So then the the guy from the camp had to take me to my dad's <laughs> house, and that's when my mom she came to my dad's house, and that's when it all broke loose. That's when my mom stopped letting me go see my dad. She Damn. was like, "You're not responsible. You just dropped that boy off." My dad flipped it. I did what that boy told me to do. <laughs> He flipped it on her. He told me he left. flipped it on her. He told me right. He said he knew where to go. No. If he didn't know where to go and he had to said yes. that, then I would have asked you where to go. Yes. He made it seem like y'all y'all go this way every time. My mom goes, mother. She, she's yeah. so mad. She go, we don't drive. So how right. would he know how to get there in the car? Oh, my God. We don't drive. Like, what the you hell? You was in the car. You was driving. What makes you think he know how to get there in the car? You didn't think of that? He was like, I did what that boy <laughs> told me to do. <laughs> hey, that's it's it. his fault. I ain't going to deal with this. Yeah. I ain't going to deal with this. My mom, literally, when I say my mom had no patience because my dad just did so much stupid stuff, my dad, <laughs> he used to steal toys for us and bring them 
burning like to the house for us. <laughs> my mom, she got on to it because he never had receipts. None of our toys had packaging. Like, oh, uh, it was just like you know toy. how toys come in package. It was just, it was just toys. They were just the parts with it. Hey, Here. hey, they just be, it just be a bag of like He Man <laughs> and GI Joes. Yeah, hey, uh, no uh, accessories. My mom was like, "Where you get these toys from? You talking about where I get the toys from? <laughs> I went and bought them. It's Christmas. Oh. Why they in the trash bag? <laughs> where the bag oh, at that they came in from the store? I didn't oh, want the boy to man. know what they was. I put them in the dark." <laughs> Oh my god. Hey. Oh man, you can't. Hey, he care. stole he stole a Sonic 6. You know them bikes? Oh. Dang. When the Sonic 6 came out, oh, I wanted the Sonic no. 6 so bad. My dad stole it. My mom oh, made me god. give it back. Dang. Like the 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 effort was there. Right. Yeah. The effort was the effort was oh, there to man. do the right thing. His his way about going things was just wrong. And I mean, you know, it of course that's what drugs do. Drugs right. take you down a a, a road where you don't understand the destruction that you're causing. So mm. how it, was it when you found out that pops, you know, like some of the behavior was like, ah. Oh. What was crazy is that some of my like, friends was selling drugs to my dad before I knew my dad was on drugs. Wow. Oh. So I didn't even oh, know. Yeah. I became Ooh. a joke. I became a joke without knowing that I was a joke. And then finally, then they told me, and then my brother was like, you old enough to know, you can go ahead and know now. You know, dad, dad is on drugs bad. How old were you then, Kev? When my brother told me, I was like 14. Damn. 14, 15. Because that was when my brother was selling drugs. Oh. Oof. Yeah. And then th- does that moment, do you get like that uh, that usual suspects moment where you start to rewind? Like, yeah. Oh, you start okay. to think about everything. Yep. You yep. start to think about yep. everything. Everything. Man, and how do I you think, turn that I, around? Because even the barbershop story, bro, those yeah. are things that you think like, like man, how do you how do you get past this? Well, like, I mean, you got brother was oh, your brother was in the service. Yeah, correct? my brother was in the military. He got out the military, and you know he was taking the money that he had that was coming up from the military. He said, "Look, I want to start a business. I learn how to cut hair. You open up a barber shop." At this time, my dad was in and out of being on drugs. He was mm-hmm. attempting mm-hmm. to get himself together, and my brother was like, "Look, I'm gonna help you out, Dad. Put some money in your pocket. I'm gonna have you do the electrical work." You know, my dad was a handyman. He was a carpenter, electrician. So he was like, cool. My dad's doing a great job. My brother's got the the building. He's putting it together. It's coming together nice. We go there one day. All the stuff is missing out the shop. Shampoo bowls, clippers, everything. Everything everything that could be taken up was gone. My dad stole everything out the shop. You said he stole the hair dryers as well. Listen, everything out the shop. He stole my brother's car. That he that my brother was letting him drive to and from mm-hmm. to get the, took everything. The act. Wow. We couldn't get in touch with my dad, nothing. We go look for my dad. We found my dad in the drug area, sitting in the car. And my brother's like, look, we're gonna roll up on him. You know dad crazy, but if we gotta we gotta do something, then we're gonna have to we're gonna have to whoop dad ass if it come down to it. It was me, my brother, our friend Phil. We pulled up to the car so we could like be against the door. Mm-hmm. So my dad couldn't open the door. Oh. Dad rolls down the window. Saddest thing. Saddest, saddest, but I can find comedy in anything. Definitely one of the saddest moments oh. of my dad's life. Rolls down the window, and my dad goes, I've ran out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> like It's about time. Like, <laughs> listen, listen, it was so oh. matter-of-fact big, like... I don't know. It took y'all so long. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the look, the look on our face, man. Oh, man. Of what? <laughs> what? He responds a lot. <laughs> you say that a female in the car. Oh, yeah, female in the car. Stop. What did he tell her? No. <laughs> he didn't tell her, like, hey, you stay here, bitch. You stay here. You stay here. <laughs> hey, hey. Because he got mad. He got mad at my brother. My brother was like, Hey man, you you stole my stuff. You gotta, he's like, where my stuff at? Man, that, that stuff gone. Oh yeah, all that stuff gone, man. Wow. I ain't gonna deal with this. He got out of the car. He was like, you stay here, bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> girl Don't was in you the car, just looking. I tell you, I tell you one more, wow. one more go, and this is just to give oh, people God. just an understanding of what's in here. All right. Uh, at this point, reality set in. You know, I know the situation with my dad. I get why my mom was doing the things that she was doing to keep me. You know away or to try to protect mm. me from information that I shouldn't have known at that age. Mm-hmm. So I didn't see my dad for like four years, yo. This wow. is like, I just don't know where dad at. I'm not, I don't have a number on him, nothing. I'm coming home from school one day. I think I see my dad on the train. Oh my God. Dad? 
yo, dad, I ain't seen my dad. That's still mm-hmm. dad. I'm mm-hmm. right. dad. <laughs> right. My dad sees me and it, he look, he looked bad. Mm-hmm. Door opens up, took off, What? ran off the train. Holy, <laughs> holy shnikes. Hey, you hadn't seen him in four I years. Him in four years. The time after that when I saw him is the time when me and my brother, I was I was old enough now. I had my job. I was like, yo, let's put him in rehab. Mm-hmm. And that's when we put him in How's rehab. How's your dad now, Kev? My dad is a 100% good now. I heard so that. so awesome. 100% good now. Bought him a house. He got a car. He's, Go ahead now. He's good. He's happy now. Did he don't got to steal no more. Did, did he do one of those? Yeah, like, oh man, dad. <laughs> the crazy thing car. is my dad, my dad read the book. And, you know, I'm arguing with my dad. <laughs> He's like, I can't believe y'all talking about I stole the Clippers. <laughs> you stole the like, Clippers. Man, I'm not making this up. <laughs> you don't remember that? Like, me and my dad and my brother had a three-way call. He's like, you can't, Bug, he's talking about I stole your Clippers. My brother's like, you, you did. did. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you know writing the book how much legal I had to go through? Yo, my dad oh my is, God, he, awesome. he is a character, man. But I'm I'm so grateful for, for the life that he lived. I'm so mm-hmm. grateful for mm-hmm. the mistakes that he's made. I'm so grateful that I can say that that man is my father. And how much have you yeah, learned the right Tons, and the man. wrong? Tons. From, like, from, from everything. That's exactly what it is. Like, I, I got a blueprint of what to do and what not to yes, do. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm a dad now. I'm an amazing dad. Let me tell you Let me tell you how crazy this is, how serious I take this dad, mm-hmm. this dad title. I am here now. I had to fly back. I'm on my book tour right now. Yes, sir. I was in New York. I had book signings, I had interviews, I had talk shows, everything. I had to fly back yesterday, right? As soon as I got done, get here by 4 o'clock. I had 45 minutes to get from the airport to my daughter's school, catch my daughter's graduation, see my baby graduate, be there with her, love you, honey. Oh, my God. She's so happy I'm here. First of all, didn't even didn't even get dad a good 40 minutes because the friends and everybody's around. Oh. But the uh-huh. fact that I was there was enough. You saw my yeah, face. You right. saw daddy come back. Going right back to the city now. As soon as I'm done this, I got to get back on the plane. I got to go back to New York, pick up where I left off on the East Coast. Mm. Then I got to come back out here on the weekend because my son got his last soccer game. Damn. Wow. So I got to catch that game. Then I got to go back out. But being present and making sure that, that time is spent with the kids is more important than anything mm-hmm. because I know the effect that it has if you don't. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. So because I witnessed those things and I was just strong enough to make it through it, I'm just a I'm just a realist. I know how to separate false reality from real reality. And real reality is no matter how much emotion and feeling you may have or how much hurt you may have, life has to go on. Life doesn't stop mm-hmm. for anybody. So if you don't process that and understand that, you're stuck in whatever time period you got hurt forever. Mm-hmm. Forever. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So grudges and anger and negativity, I don't have time for it because mm-hmm. I'm living to do so much positive things. Right. I got so much don't beige such a that. positive outlook on everything else that's coming in the future. I can't I can't stand in the past and bathe in what was wrong. Kev, um I hate asking this question. I don't have it. Um, no, no, it's not, it's not the money thing. I okay. appreciate that. Though. Sorry, sorry. Jumped but, the gun. Um, I jumped the gun. What do reflex. you have coming up? Oh man, uh, it's a tough time to ask it too. How much right. time we got? Yeah, yeah. Oh, time man. We got. Oh, wow. Tough time Good to ask. Lord, bro. Oh, um, right now, of course, uh, I'm excited. This is my first book, man. Uh, put yes. a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this book. And you so, can see that, bro. Um, you know, it's out now. And Kev is written well. It's good, man. It's good. It's put written a lot of time well, and effort man. Into it. You know, you got this one. You also have the audio, which is available on audible.com. Oh, and I'm perfect. basically performing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you said perfect. Uh, perfect. Uh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't know how we know how. That Captain Underpants is in theaters now as yes. well. Um, I'm about to film a movie called Night School this summer, which is written and produced by my company, Heartbeat Productions, oh, along nice. with Universal. So I'm excited about that. We're developing movies now. Yeah, you know, man. You got a deal, and you got some with Ti as well. Uh, uh, yes, me Showtime. and Tip. Tip, we uh, created the show that we're producing for Showtime. Um, based off of the studio life, but told through the eyes of the people that work in the studio, I love the it. people that go in. It's a real good concept. And, and Jumanji, that. Jumanji comes yes, out in so Christmas. Oh, um, Untouchable, which is a remake of the foreign film with 
me, Brian Cranston, Nicole Kidman. Ooh, um, damn. Okay. About to do season six, Real Husbands of Hollywood, launching a network, a multicultural comedy network. Um, myself and Lionsgate sit as 50 50 partners. And mm, this mm, is, mm. I'm excited about it. It's called Laugh Out Loud Network. Um, that'll be late June, early July. Um, about to go on tour, yeah. 2018. So, are you about to do another tour? Yes. And, and you are not competition with yourself, but Kev, to do 50,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. Do you try to top that? Or are you like, no, nah, I, I did that. You no, know what no, I'm saying? I'm, I can uh, go back to. I'm going to the moon on this one. Hey, okay. Yeah, yeah. Take yeah. us. So we better. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y'all going right. to need space suits. Yeah. 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 I like hey, it. Hey, man. Yeah, Why at like some this. point we're going to be like, man, this man. dude really he going to really the moon. really is going to the moon. <laughs> yeah, this to that, drop this a hot, I want to be a Nike rep To drop a hot 50. Yeah. He said he's going to the moon to do a 50 minute set. Can you imagine floating groupies? You know what I'm saying? Like, hey. I'm telling you, bro, if we had two days that would be enough time mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but i thank you for coming in yeah, bro. brother man i told you i don't change right okay? right you always give me crap and i deserve it when you give it to me mm. kev you ain't been to the studio in a minute mm. kev we i ain't seen you. you in a minute yeah. kev i ain't trying to have no phoner and you're right when you say it go ahead and when you check me I, I respond yes sir you check me and i said no big you're absolutely right i'm gonna come i'm going straight to the airport I'm going straight to the plane right now. I heard but that, But I said, man. this is Thank a stop you. that I had to make to see my guy. I appreciate oh. that, bro. my guy is Thank my you, guy. You well, he talking to me, you guys. Yeah. Not you guys. Yeah. Listen, listen. We're part of you. They don't hear Thank you. He don't know your names. But he still got to enjoy him. That's stop it, man. He got a book. He's a politician, pretty much. No, man, I'm serious. I appreciate your continued support, man. I got nothing but love for you guys. Nothing but love for the whole team. Um, and for all the listeners, guys, go out, man. Yes. Go oh get my, my book. Go Please support. It. Trying to get to that number one in the New York Times Woo! bestseller yeah, you list. And That'd it's not a book thing. that you just read. Like, you will hold on to this book and continue to crack it open. It's There's a few dope. books that I do that with, and you just write notes and everything, man. And, and I know we got we got to wrap up, and I don't want to elaborate on this too much, but there's one right here, man, where it says the biggest difference between an amateur and a professional, between the wannabe and the star, between the dabbler and the expert. The, the unsuccessful get halfway to the finish line, then turn around. The successful get halfway, then keep going. Mm. Both run the same distance, but only one makes it to the finish line. Ooh. There you go. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's what man. we were talking about earlier. Kevin Hart, I appreciate true. you, yeah, yeah, my brother. Continue, Nothing but love for you, man. You running? I'm out, y'all. Kevin Hart in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. I can't make this up. Yeah. Life lessons. Kevin Hart in the neighborhood. Grab that and hold on to it. We are Big Boys big Neighborhood. Boy.